Lee speaking to you today, and I'm very, very excited to tell you a little more about Yamaha's remote lesson. Now, the remote lesson allows Mark IV and E3 disc clavier owners to connect their instruments to other Mark IV and E3 disc claviers located anywhere in the world remotely uh, via the internet. Now, many years ago, Yamaha began developing its own system of distance learning, and it placed really special emphasis on accurately capturing and playing back uh, what was being played, performed on the disc clavier. And I was uh, very honored to be part of this project team, which included many uh, wonderful colleagues, including Dr. Jana Lipinski of the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto, uh, Dr. Jennifer Snow of UCLA, Dr. Maria O'Hara of Stephen F. Austin University, Dr. Stella Sick of Hamline University, and uh, educational consultants, Mr. George Litterst and, um, and Ms. Shanna Kirk. Sorry, Shanna. Now, um, I had spoken a little about how the disc, how remote lesson really accurately captures what is being played between the teacher and the student. And so let me give you a little demonstration. The pedal, the damper pedal, I could press the damper pedal slowly or quickly, and I can do the same with the unicorda pedal, and the exact same motion takes place on the instrument of the student. I could play very, very softly, and the student's instrument will be playing exactly the same thing with the perfectly same nuance. I could play very fast repeated notes, and I can even play uh, depress a couple of notes without making a sound. Quite amazing. Now, this level of responsiveness makes it possible for teachers to work on the really the fine details of piano playing with their students, no matter how far they may be in distance apart. Now, if you take this amazing technology and add to it video chat or video conferencing software such as Skype or uh, FaceTime, and we have incredible opportunities in the field of distance learning. Imagine a student would be able to play for any teacher, any master teacher, one-on-one -on -one with absolutely no uh, geographical boundaries. In addition, the Yamaha Remote Lesson allows a connection of up to four instruments simultaneously. So other people around the world may listen into this lesson and or even participate in it. It's quite an amazing, beautiful thing to think of. Now, let's give a little demonstration of how this lesson may work. So for this, we have our very distinguished Ms. Bonnie Barrett. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Now, you have the B flat impromptu B -flat of Schubert. Impromptu of Schubert, yes. And, and um, would you like to play the theme? Sure. What's that? I haven't oh. had much chance to practice since our last demonstration, so I'll try to think about some of the things that we talked well, about then. Most of my, pra my students practice during the lesson. So. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm guilty of that for sure. So, uh, yeah, I'll take the theme, and maybe okay. eventually we'll get into the first variation, but maybe okay. not today. But let's. Let's see how we do, and I'll try to think of all the things that we've talked about. So. <laughs>
tempo up you, a little bit. Beautiful. It's it's so much better, and it's like you have so many different colors in the theme. It really sounds wonderful. Then you know maybe we can talk a little bit about pedaling then. Yeah. Pedaling. Because I think for the most part you're pedaling uh, one per beat, twice per measure, which uh -huh. sounds great. But maybe for a little variety, for example, in the third measure, there's a little 16th no rest right. for the first time. So maybe you can do some, let's see, I'll, I'm going to try from the beginning. Which adds a little bit of a dance-like spirit, and the fourth measure is very much a dance. It's, it's sort of like later on uh, right, right, right. a variation yeah. that goes like that. Yeah. And so if you take off the pedal during the 16th notes, I think it'll you'll bring out the lightness. So, so those two measures... Yeah, measure four, take off the pedal in the, in the 16th note. That's right. So measure three for the for, during the rest, right. and then right. measure four during the little 16th notes. Yeah. Why don't you try right. from the beginning? I'll yeah. Try it. I'm so reliant on the pedal to cover all my mistakes, but this is <laughs> <laughs> But I'll try. <laughs> No, but measure three so, sounded really great. Yeah, Do you want to try good. just the measure four? Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's right. Same thing moving on. You I mean, know, that's that's an idea. Another idea could be in measure uh, 10, right after the repeat. Right. Uh, uh, let, uh, I take off, I change the pedal on the second half of the second measure. So for example, you know, you see that long note, the C major? Right. Yeah. Where the left hand plays that third C and E natural, try changing the pedal and it'll give you that time to change the color. color. Let me try that again. You see what I'm doing? Yeah, so right, right around the C and the E you're changing the pedal. When the bass, yes. Okay, uh -huh. I'll take it from the, the repeat bar then. Okay. And you know what? And you can listen to that chord as you change the pedal, and that will help you change the color into the decrescendo. See what I mean? Yeah, no, that sounds great. I'll, I'll work on that for our <laughs> okay. lesson tomorrow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Bonnie. Thank You're you, a great Lisa. Teacher. You're a wonderful teacher and a wonderful young artist. Thank you very much.